Compared to that weak, double-talking, phony, baloney conservative known as Patrick Brown, Doug Ford is a breath of fresh air when it comes to being the leader of Ontario's Progressive Conservative Party. But based on recent announcements, some people are wondering if Doug Ford really does represent change or if this is a matter of, as the Who once saying, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. From the moment he announced that he wanted to be the leader of the PC party, Doug Ford was crystal clear in his speeches that, unlike the dark old days of Patrick Brown, this party would not be beholden to the elites, and that it would always be accountable to the desires of grassroots constituencies when it came to electing PC candidates. And so what happened on Saturday? Well, like a lightning bolt from Mount Olympus, a directive was issued noting that no fewer than 11 candidates would be appointed in various writings. What happened to being beholden to the grassroots? What happened to the democratic process? Ford has publicly stated that thanks to the mess he inherited from the bumbling Brown, and given that the election is less than two months away, the party had to move fast. These statements are undeniably true, but I'm sorry, Mr. Ford, democracy rushed is democracy denied. Democracy cannot be treated like a drive through line at the local fast food eatery. We might be near the 11th hour in terms of choosing candidates, but it's not quite the 11th hour yet. And now comes part two of the shocking announcement, folks. Some of the candidates that have been appointed are unapologetic liberals. Case in point, Meredith Cartwright. She's a Toronto human rights lawyer. She once headed up one of Canada's largest liberal women's clubs. And she once vied to be the federal liberal candidate in Toronto Centre. But this lifelong leftist is now the PC candidate for Toronto Centre? Does her resume sound like it's one that belongs to a Conservative? And then there's Christina Mitas, who was appointed as the candidate in Scarborough Centre. Mitas is a Masters of Arts candidate in leadership and policy at OISE, the Ontario Institute for Studies and Education. She is also president of the OISE Alumni Association. Now, folks, for those who aren't familiar with OISE, let's put it this way. It would be impossible to find a more left-leaning educational organization in all of Canada than OISE. And like Cartwright, this liberal leopard has also changed her spots overnight. <laughs> really? Sorry, but this is precisely the sort of rancid garbage that was part of the Patrick Brown playbook. It was this sort of bait-and-switch strategy that made a legion of Conservatives abandon the party under Brown in the first place. They quickly recognized that Brown was a pretend Conservative, but Doug Ford is a real Conservative. At least I think so. So why, Doug, why? Why parachute hardcore Liberals into the PC party? You're better than that. You're also better than going the elitist route too, Doug. Case in point, Mike Harris Jr., the son of former Premier Mike Harris, is the appointed candidate for Kitchener-Conestoga. Now, I've always been a fan of Mike Sr., and maybe Mike Jr. is cut from the same cloth as his dad. But earlier this month, Mike Jr. ran for the neighboring riding of Waterloo, and he lost. Yet, Mike Jr. is now in Lake Flynn, even though there were other several interested candidates in the running for Kitchener-Conestoga. But why? Because of his surname? Is that why he's in? Come on, Doug. We already have one Princess Caroline. We don't need two candidates running simply because they belong to the lucky DNA club. In any event, Doug, by announcing those 11 appointments, you have broken a fundamental promise that you repeatedly made on the campaign trail. And you know what, Doug? That's exactly the sort of thing the elites dine out on. Saying one thing and then doing the precise opposite. That's not you, Doug. You're better than that. Bottom line, Doug, you must resist being steered into a poor decision by the Patrick Brown acolytes who still infest your party. That means you need to delete these appointments and let the people in these writings decide who they want as their representatives. That's called democracy. That's called making good on a promise that you have made several times over. And that's called doing the right thing. For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies.
Hey folks, you may have heard the Rebel has a brand new app. Please download that app and take the Rebel with you wherever you go.